The following is a selected video from MasterTheContent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit MasterTheContent.com. Your career, our passion. Ionization energy. Let's begin by taking a look down here at figure 1.8. Now, if we add, if we add energy, right? So if we add energy to an atom, as we see here, then we can get, uh, we can make an electron jump to a higher energy level, right? We can get an electron to jump to a higher energy level. Now, if that electron gains enough energy, it can actually be removed. It can be removed from the atom. And once that electron is removed from the atom, we're left with a ion. And it's an ion because it, it has lost an electron. Now, the amount of energy that it took to actually remove this electron, that energy is what is known as the ionization energy. So let's go ahead now and read our definition. The ionization energy is the amount of energy needed to remove the highest energy electron from a gaseous atom or ion, and the units for ionization energy are kilojoules per mole, as we see here. Now, more than one electron can be removed from an atom and it will take place sequentially. If we take a look over here, we see that an, there's an initial amount of energy that was required and then we're left with a monovalent positive ion as we see here. Now, they, now we, again, with energy, we can remove another electron and then we're left with a dipositive ion and then with energy again, we see that with this reaction, a, a electron is removed again. Now, one other thing that we should note is the amount of energy required to remove that burst electron, right? That's known as your first ionization energy, right? So that's going to be the energy required to remove one electron. Now, the amount of energy required to remove that second electron, that's known as your second ionization energy, and so on for the third ionization energy. And furthermore, the second ionization energy is always going to be higher than the first ionization energy because it's harder to remove that second electron and we'll discuss why in just a few slides now next what we should do is let's go ahead and point out the ionization trends and examine them on the periodic table and explain as to why they exist as they do now looking here at uh, figure 1.1 1 .1, uh, excuse me figure 1.9 we see that the ionization energy trend increases going from the left to the right on the periodic table. Furthermore, it increases up a group, right? As we see here as well, the ionization energy. Now, let's go ahead and explain this trend first as to why it increases across the period. Then we can take a look at why it increases as we go up a group. Now, if you recall in part 1B of this lecture series, right, on this slide, on this slide here, we had demonstrated that group one elements have one valence electron right they have one valence electron so we'll pick up from that thought and if we come back here we see that group one elements have one valence electron now to obtain a full outermost shell they would rather give up that one electron than gain electrons thus on the left side of the periodic table we could generalize that the we're gonna we're gonna see that these elements here they're gonna give up their electrons rather than gain electrons now if we move you contrast that with, uh, for example, the halogens, that being main group seven, right? They have seven valence electrons, right? They have seven valence electrons, and they would rather gain one electron than give up seven electrons to obtain a full most outer shell. Thus, as we see here, the right side of the periodic table would rather gain electrons, while the left side of the periodic table would rather give up electrons, right? So then it makes sense that the the ionization trend increases going to the right because it takes it's going to take less energy to remove those valence electrons on the left side and it's going to take more energy to remove those valence electrons on the right side because as we see here they would rather gain electrons than give them up now how about as we move up a group what's taking place there well as we move if we take a look at group one so we'll take a look here at group one as we uh, as we move uh, if we take a look at the valence electrons in group one as we're moving down the row we're seeing that those valence electrons they're going to be on they're going to be on subsequent uh, quantum levels right they're going to be on subsequent quantum levels those valence electrons and if they're going to be on subsequent quantum levels 
then what's going to end up occurring is those valence electrons are going to be farther from the nucleus. And if they're farther from the nucleus, they're going to, they're not going to have a they're not going to have an attraction for the nucleus that's that is as strong. And that term that we had used in part one b that was that was called the effective nuclear charge. Thus, as we move down a group, right, the valence electrons are going to feel have a smaller uh, effective nuclear charge. Thus, these electrons are going to be easier to remove, right? They're not going to require as much energy. Thus, they have a lower ionization energy. Now, as we move up a group, those valence electrons are going to be closer to the nucleus and they're going to require more energy, thus a higher ionization energy to, uh, to remove them from the atom. Okay, great. Let's delve a little bit deeper now and uh, take a look at at uh, at figure 1.10. Uh, excuse me, for a second, let's come back up here. So on the previous slide, we had just stated that the, that the ionization energy increases to the right going across a row. One irregularity in that trend, it, we can actually see